When I, was, uh, when I got into college, uh, when I went to LSU, uh, I started meeting a lot of people from different areas of the country, different areas of the world, really, uh, especially different areas of the state, and I noticed that there is something different about Bayou people, right? We're all warm, we're all pretty, we're, we're, we're pretty, uh, a lot of people around here haven't met a stranger, right, in their entire life. Um, we're really open, you, meet, you come over to the family's house one time and you are then family, right? So I remember growing up and, and this was the culture, and then when I got into college, um, I went to, I started getting involved with the Catholic Center on campus, and I started to meet a few different people, and I think all of us have experienced this before. We walk into a room, we walk into a group of new people, and there are a couple of people that we just click with, Right? That we're not, there are a few people that like, whether it be our interest, whether it be the way we act, whether it be our personalities, whatever it is, there's something about it that just like, boom, we're going to be best friends for a long time, right? The flip side is also true, where hey, we're going to have a hard time becoming friends, right? Just the personality might not jive, this per, they, they, they might come from a different kind of background, a different place in the country, in the world, whatever it is, like it's just like, we're gonna, if we're going to be friends, this is going to take some work, right? I remember uh, it, it, we, we would sit together as the Catholic group of students in LSU football games. Um, so I would walk into the LSU game and we would get there a, a, an ungodly time before kickoff to make sure we had our spot roped off, everything good. Um, I, I was full of my own liquid courage when I would walk in. And I remember I was talking to a friend of mine in this, a, a couple of years after I started hanging around. And it was these two girls, and they told me, they said, you know, we couldn't stand you. I said, excuse me? They said, it's nothing personal, but we just could not stand you. Why? You were loud? Okay. You were obnoxious? Okay. And you were a know-it-all? Well, thank you. But they just said, very, very frankly, we couldn't stand you. Now, this was two of those people that, like, we weren't the closest of friends. We didn't hit it off right away. It took some time to get to this point of our friendship, right? But they had built up, we had built up enough of a friendship for them to be able to look at me and just say, we could not stand you. Appreciate it. But I thought it was funny because they threw in the phrase, it's nothing personal. It's nothing personal. You're just loud, obnoxious, and a know-it-all. But it's nothing personal. The phrase, it's nothing personal, is kind of like with all due respect. Right, right after that phrase is going to be an insult. No question. Right? It's nothing personal, but you're ugly. It's nothing personal, but you're loud. Like It, was just, it, it hit me, and I remember, it's nothing personal. It kind of stuck out. I think what happens a lot of time when we approach our faith is that we can approach with the mentality of it's nothing personal. What does that phrase do? That phrase, is a, that phrase in a conversation between friends or a conversation between enemies basically is supposed to be a get-out-of-jail-free card. I can say whatever I want and I can get away with it. With our faith, it's a get-out-of-jail-free card. It's a do-whatever-we-want as long as it's not too personal. I approach my faith and I say, you know what, it's nothing personal, Lord, but do I really need to go to Mass on Sunday? It's, it's nothing personal, Lord, but that whole like prayer thing, it's kind of boring. It's nothing personal. See, that mentality seeps in to our world and into our Catholic mindset and our Catholic imagination in a really, really cancerous kind of way. There was a study that was done a few years ago that 52% of Catholics did not believe that you could have a personal relationship with God. Think about that. Over half of Catholics did not and do not believe that I, me, 
John David Mathern from Raceland, Louisiana can have a personal relationship with God. How big of a tragedy is that over half of our church, over half of the people who profess to be Catholic and understand being Catholic and say that I do all the things I'm supposed to do, I pray all the prayers I'm supposed to pray, I show up when I'm supposed to show up, that over half of our church says, I cannot have, it is impossible to have a personal relationship with God. We're embarking on Lent. We're embarking on a journey. We're embarking on a time where it is supposed to be completely and totally and utterly a personal time with the Lord. But if it's not personal, then what is it? If we approach Lent where it's not personal, then Lent becomes about today getting dirt on our head, next on Friday eating fried fish, and then on Good Friday having a really good crawfish boil. Because it becomes about the externals. It becomes about something that's outside of myself, that's outside of my relationship with God. As long as I jump through the hoops and do the things, then I look right. And that's enough. Because it's over there, and it's nothing personal. When we come today to begin this Lenten journey, we don't come just to get dirt on our heads. We don't come just to, just to have the, the, the priest pray over you and just drop some old palms on your head. The most attended Mass in the Catholic Church in the United States is Ash Wednesday Mass. And I'm convinced the reason why Ash Wednesday Mass typically is the most attended Mass is because we get a mark that says if we went to church or not. Because it's about an external, oftentimes. Oftentimes it's about what did I, did I show up and was that enough? God doesn't want us just to show up this Lent. God wants it to be completely and totally personal. And the reality is, with the way that the last year has progressed, with the way that, that it feels like we've been in a Lent now for 12 months, not 12 hours, I, I don't know about you, but I could use God being personal for a little while. I can use a season of being, ex, of being able to exhale and stand before God and say, God, I want you to prove to me that you care. That you're focused on me. And that it is possible to have a personal relationship with God. God doesn't want to be at arm's length this year. God wants to come and meet you and I in His sacraments. He wants to come meet you and I in our prayer. He wants to come meet you and I at Easter in a profound, profound way. Today when we begin, we're going to sprinkle ashes on our heads. We're going to have a prayer that's going to say, remember you are dust and to dust you shall return. We reflect a lot today at the beginning of Lent on our death. Because the reality is, is everything that's external, everything that's an arm length away, it's all passing. It's all going to go away. It's all going to die. It's all going to become ash. But Lent doesn't leave us in despair. Lent doesn't leave us there just reflecting on how finite the world is and how everything's passing. Lent brings us to another place. Lent brings us to April 4th on Easter Sunday whenever we are back in relationship with God where we reflect on the fact that God wants us in His presence personally for the rest of eternity in heaven. Heaven is nothing but personal. It's one-on-one. -on -one, God and me, face-to-face. -face. So how are we approaching Lent? Are we approaching it as if it is just something that it's, it's the motions. It's what I'm supposed to do. 
I'm coming to get the ashes because I'm supposed to. And I'll sneak out before communion, don't worry. I'll, I'll beat traffic. Am I, am I coming to, into Lent as, great, this is an excuse to eat me some fried fish and bald crawfish on Fridays? Are we approaching Lent as, as it, you know what, this is, this, is my, this is my New Year's resolution 2.0. I'll lose about 10 pounds. Are we approaching Lent where we have a personal God who desires nothing more than to reveal Himself to us more. We have a personal God who wants to reveal Himself and wants us to fall in love with Him more. When it comes to our church, when it comes to our faith, it is always personal. Today, after we, get the, after we receive our ashes, we're going to go back and we're going, to, we're going to pray the way we best know how by celebrating the Eucharist. Where God personally steps down to this altar to meet you. Not you, plural. Singular. He steps down today to meet you. Fill your name in, in the blank. He steps down to meet you to meet me, to meet each one of us in His sacrament. To remind us how personal He wants to get. May we approach this Lent not with God at arm's length, a, safety spa- a safe space away, but instead, let us approach this Lent as a, with a God, being before a God, who wants nothing more than to meet you. It's a tragedy if we wake up on Easter morning and we're exactly where we are today. Because Lent is all about progressing closer and closer to our personal God. Amen.